Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a continuous clock transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. So it's gonna look up a little something like this, bring this up to full screen, and you can see that it's just going to be this continuous sort of clock transition that ends in a different piece of footage. And basically what this is, is it's you know a really you know fun, cheeky way to pass time uh, with a transition. Great for like vlogs or like more upbeat sort of, think like spy movie sort of transition. Uh, it has a lot of fun with it, and it's a great way to show a bunch of different footage and to get from point A to point B and to show a passage of time. So let's get started with this effect. It's actually really simple to accomplish. I'm gonna be going over two different methods to accomplish this. The really fast way and then the little bit more way, but it's gonna give you a little bit more control and maybe a little bit more ease of maintenance later on. So first thing we need to do is just create ourselves a new sequence and then just drag in all of our footage right here. And you'll see that it's all you know this long, uh, various lengths. Uh, right like so. What we need to do is we need to find a point where we want to cut it. So let's say we want to start right here. So we're going to begin our transition here. So we're going to drag in our second piece of footage over here like so. And now what we need to do is we need to go into our effects. We need to go down into video transitions and then down to wipe. And then we are looking for the clock wipe right here. And we're going to drag that onto the right side over here. We don't want to go down the middle and I'll explain that in a second. We're then going to click on the duration or we're going to click on the effect itself. We're going to go up to the duration right here and we need to input something that we're going to use for every one of them. So let's, for example, let's make each one 17 frames big, right like so. And so that's going to be our duration. The reason we need to set something, you know, that every single one uses is because we don't want our clock to go fast, then slow, then fast, then slow, then fast, then slow. I mean, you could do that if that's an effect you actually want to achieve. But if it isn't, we want to make sure everything is perfectly um, sort of symmetrical with one another. So after this transition finishes, right when it finishes, we're going to cut this footage. And then now what we're gonna do is grab our next piece of footage, which is all way, way over here. Uh, so maybe like a roll and cut or something may be better to help so you don't have to keep dragging the footage back. And then we're gonna click and drag that on. And then we're going to, we need to find a point where we want this to cut in. Let's say right there where we stop moving, grab that clock wipe, drop it on. Click on it and make sure that duration is 17 like before. So zero this out, make this a one and make that a seven. And then now our duration is exactly the same and continue this process down. I keep accidentally clicking X here. And we're going to then continue this process and add in all of our footage. So we have two more pieces here, or let's see, three more pieces here. And so yeah, I'm just gonna continue to do that. Okay, and there we have it. Now we have all of them at the exact same position, and it's just clock wipe into clock wipe into clock wipe into clock wipe. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Just one after the next. So we have this effect created right like so. One, two, three, four, five. And then we end on whatever this footage is on the right. So we go from point A over here to point B while transitioning between a bunch of different moments throughout. Uh, like I said, a good, a good way to emulate passing of time. That is the simple way to do it. The reason I said it's a little bit hard to maintain is because if we want to make all these durations one second or you know one second and four frames, it's going to take a little bit of work. We're going to have to expand all of these out and roll them all out to make it work. However, you can do it a little bit differently. Is Instead of using the clock wipe transition, what we can actually use is the radial wipe transition right here. And this is going to require us to animate it ourselves. So what we do is we put every layer on top of one another, like so. And then wherever the transition begins is where the footage beneath it will begin so that it can actually transition to something. Then what I did was I went 20 frames forward. So I held down shift and went one, two, three, four, and animated that. So you see we have right here the transition complete goes from 0% up to 100%. And then what I do next is I click on the next footage and I begin its transition right there. So right when this one ends, this one begins. It goes forward 20, one, two, three, four begins, this one now begins, and this one goes forward as well, or this one begins its transition. And so we create this clock transition over here as well. And you'll see. And one of the effects that you can add by doing this manually is that you can add in a feather to it. You can also start the angle at somewhere that isn't just directly the top. So for example, if we wanted to start the angle at let's say the right side, we could go 90 there and maybe we drop this down to like 14. 90 over here and 14 again and then 
90, 14, 90, 14. And then so now what we have is we can actually start this from some other direction. So maybe on the right side over here. Or, you know, maybe we can even make it try to, you know, go a little bit over every single time and make a fun more transition. So this is just a way that you can do it that has, um, that you actually animate yourself, giving you a little bit more control, giving you a little bit sort of more, you know, direction in how you want to actually implement it. But the, the easy way is perfectly fine if exactly, you know, if it's exactly what you want to do right here is if you just want to make a clock transition starting from the center, starting from the top, going around as many times as you want, this is definitely the way you want to go. If you want a little bit of extra control, you can build it using this way as well. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to give you every other day on Adobe-related products. Until next time, guys, see ya.